Hello. Hello, um, Sam. Please state your name. Dan Hoover. Okay. And to start my questions, first I want to ask five questions pertaining to historical events. Question number one. Um, do you remember what was going on during the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, you heard some things about it, especially in the newspaper and on the news once in a while, but it was, to me, it was kind of, uh, we knew it was going on, but we didn't hear a whole lot about it. So, were you ever scared? Yeah, they had a few advertisements on TV that showed missiles being fired, uh, and uh, you know, they're, they were close enough to the United States that they could do some real damage, so... Uh, the United States did have to act fairly quickly to get that resolved. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what you did in Alaska during the Cold War? Like what your job was? What kind of stuff you uncovered at all? Our main job was to uh, keep an eye on the Russians. Uh, we were the closest uh, American base to uh, to Russia, and we um, I was a Morse code expert. Uh, went to school for uh, about a year in Pensacola, Florida, where we had to learn uh, how their code was sent, and we uh, kept an eye on all their military activities, especially in the sea, and we picked up all their messages, and and uh, some were coded, some weren't, uh, as far as secrety, but most of it was just a report of the trawlers that were actually spy boats uh, back to the mothership that was out there in the center of them. We just kept 24-7 surveillance on their movements. If anything different than what they normally did happen, then we were on alert. Oh, okay. Um, where were you on 9-11 and what were your thoughts on it? What, what? What were your thoughts on 9-11? Oh, 9-11? Yeah. Of course, hardly anybody could believe it. They thought it was a small plane or something crashed, accidentally hit the Twin Tower, but, uh, as the beginning of a new era <laughs> yeah. for everybody. And it's threat is still out there, but I think we hopefully have increased our uh, defensive uh, mode to keep an eye on any threat anywhere, which is almost impossible to do, but major threats are probably uh, well known before anything like that would happen again. But uh, yeah, I felt uh, terrified at first because I thought they were going to strike everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did you feel when Ronald Reagan was shot? Well, I couldn't figure out why he was shot. He, uh, he was a good president. Uh, honest for all I know and uh, I couldn't figure out why he he was uh, targeted but I uh, I know uh, it was a shock to everybody when he did get shot luckily he wasn't killed by that shot mm -hmm. and uh, that might have been the beginning of things to come uh but for what reason he was shot, I don't know. I, I couldn't understand why. Mm -hmm. um, did you watch the moon landing on TV when that happened? And what did you think about that? Oh, yeah. It was uh, a great thing till they come out with that movie. That, <laughs> that They thought it was a fictitious thing set up by our government to uh, make us look good. Mm. And it was all on, on a, in a... Uh, studio somewhere, but we know that's not true. <laughs> yes. Yeah.
but it was it was really neat to watch a man's first footprint on on the moon. And uh, it, my grandmother was still alive, Apollo eleven. So that was Apollo eleven, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, they even had a little. Here's something I'll throw in. They had a little uh, glass glasses and a decanter you could get at uh, service stations. You pulled in, you would collect. You could bought so much gas, you get a glass. And the whole collection was like six glasses and a and that was worth something. Yeah. Follow <laughs> well, up. Um, next, I have five open-ended questions. Number one, what was it like to work at Eli Lilly for so long? Like, what was your job, and like, did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed Lily when it was a family-based, more of a family-based company before we went worldwide. Uh, I was in a microbiological laboratory. Uh, we tested antibiotics and um, to make sure their potency, and, and we tested vitamins to make sure their potencies were up to snuff before they were sent out. Uh, and packaged and sent out on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But um, I did that for quite a few years. I worked for Elizabeth Arden, which is a cosmetic company. Um, it's called preservative testing. They put preservatives in cosmetics so the stuff they made the cosmetics with would not uh, turn bad. They kept them preserved. And uh, I did a lot of work in that for a couple of three years. Uh, but it was all dealing with microorganisms and their challenge against whatever uh, product we had. The uh, last part of Lily's, I was in method development where we had to test new products and uh, microbiologically write new methods for the FDA to get approved. So if anybody tested them by our methods, it was something that we had written. Oh, okay. Um, if you could choose any president throughout history to be in office today, who would it be and why? Probably a combination. But uh, I think a good combination would be uh, Abraham Lincoln as the main man, the president, and... Uh, Harry S. Truman as a vice president, <laughs> which is kind of a contrast, but you need both both of those types of personalities to deal with the world today. Yeah. Um, what is your opinion on current gun laws and the battle that's going on with them right now? Well, guns, just like anything else, medicine, uh, a knife, a uh, Computers, you can use them for the good or for the bad. Uh, it's not the gun that kills people, it's people kill people. And uh, gun has been part of our heritage, American her heritage for since uh, America was founded by us um, in the early colonial days. And a gun is to be used for, pri back then, primarily for protection, but also hunting. Mm -hmm. to uh, uh, so you have food on your table but today it's looked at as more of a protective uh, thing and uh, to take that away from us would open us up we would be so vulnerable to anything in uh, Australia they took the guns away um, you can, you're not allowed to have a firearm and I don't think they're doing so hot down there it's kind of a dictatorship when they do that, and I don't like that freedom to bear arms uh, ever being taken away. And, and if it, if somebody's going to kill somebody, they're going to get a gun, and they want to use a gun, they'll find one, legal or, legally or illegally. So it doesn't really cure the problem. you got to cure what's in a man's mind <laughs> yeah. and what conflicts are going on. you got to work, work at those first. Because killing is always going to be around, so. But a gun can sure help protect your family, if need be.
Good point. Um, growing up, who was your biggest role model growing up? And why? How, uh, how young you want to go there? <laughs> um, let's just say around my grade age. School, well, grade school through high school? Yeah. Grace, young grade school, uh, I loved Superman. <laughs> yeah. Fair, you know, he was just a hero all the time, and he always did good. And a few cowboys like the Lone Ranger and so forth, they always did good. Uh, they always solved uh, some sort of evil thing that was going on, and they turned out right when they were done. But uh, later on... Uh, I don't know who I uh, had as a role model when I was in high school. Uh, 